There are three ways a muscle fiber can form ATP. First, the phosphorylation of ADP by uh, creating phosphate. Second, the phosphorylation of ADP by the glycolytic pathway in the cytosol. And third, uh, the oxidative uh, phosphorylation uh, of ADP in the mitochondria that produces ADP. Phosphorylation of the ADP by creating phosphate provides a very rapid forming of ATP at onset of uh, a contractile activity. When the chemical bound between the creatine and the phosphate is broken, the released energy along with the phosphate group can be transferred to ADP to form an ATP. This is a reversible reaction and all catalyzed by the creatine kinase. This process uh, uh, causes a contractile activity just for a few seconds at the beginning of the muscle contraction as mentioned. At a moderate level of uh, muscular activity, uh, most of the ATP used for muscle contraction is formed by oxidative phosphorylation. And during the first five to 10 minutes of such exercise, the breakdown of muscle glycogen to glucose uh, provides the major fuel contribution to oxidative phosphorylation. For the next 30 minutes or so, blood-borne fuels become dominant, blood glucose and fatty acid contributing ex approximately the same equally. Beyond this uh, period, fatty acids become progressively more important and muscle glucose uh, uh, utilization decreases. Both uh, glucose and fatty acids in, process of oxygen, in presence of oxygen in the mitochondria produce many ATPs. Uh, for every glucose, for example, uh, the, uh, when it uh, enters the aerobic uh, respiration, a net total of 36 ATPs are produced. Uh, other products in this process are water, uh, CO2, and also uh, generation of the heat. Uh, if the exercise continue with more intensity, uh, when the, it exceeds ab about 70% of the maximum rate of ATP breakdown, glycolysis will uh, contribute to increasingly significant fraction of total ATP generated by the muscle. This process can produce ATP uh, very rapidly when uh, we have all the enzyme substrates uh, in the cell and it can do so in the absence of the oxygen so it's an anaerobic condition. The glucose for glycolysis can be obtained from two sources, the blood uh, or uh, the stores of the glycogen uh, that uh, we have in the muscle fiber. The glycolytic pathway also produce, uh, produce only a small quantity of ATP from each molecule of uh, glucose metabolized. In this case, uh, the outcome is just two ATP, which is not much, but uh, it's uh, produced very rapidly. And this is associated with the corresponding increase in production of lactic acid from the pyruvate, which also can cause muscle fatigability.